Hi everybody, just a quick video today to look at a tool that's going to help us with object selection and organization of the different um, components that make up our model. That command is called the group command and with the group command I can uh, cluster or group together either similar or dissimilar things but things that make sense to be grouped together and then be able to manipulate those things in a single pick or a single operation. All right, so let me let me quickly explain. I've got a drawing here that has just some simple objects in it. I've got some tree blocks over here on the side. I've got a horizontal alignment. I've got a building that represents, or a, a rectangle that represents perhaps a building pad with some annotation at the corner that's tied back to the alignment, and then maybe just a, a civil point object. All right, what I'd like to do, if I was going to, you know, manipulate or move or adjust the location of these trees, I would probably not do them necessarily individually. Maybe I'd like to keep the cluster in the same shape that it is and be able to move them around, only pick them in a single, single pick. What we'll do is we'll execute the command group to do this. So we'll type in group. And it's going to ask us to select objects, or I can give it a name and a description. So just to do something quickly, let's just select objects. We'll create a crossing window to select our three blocks. When I right-click and say Enter, it's created a group. I'll point out at the bottom here that, that it's an unnamed group that's being constructed. We'll get to that again in just a second. But uh, now if I were to do something with this in the future, you'll see that I select it. I've got a bounding box and a grip on the inside of the box that now I can reference and you know adjust or make changes to the uh, the trees as a group or a cluster. All right. This also works with my civil objects because some might say, well, hey, I, maybe I could do that with a block as well. A block actually will embed like civil objects within it, and then they don't always necessarily act like civil objects. With a group, at least with the experimentation that I've done, someone can post if they find differently. Uh, they'll still function as civil objects. So for example, I've got my building off to the side here with my annotation on the corner. If I was to move this, we notice they're in two pieces, so it would always require me to select it twice. And once again, this is a simple example. Maybe I would have other things that I would like the ability to move as well um, or tie together in this group. Let's do this. I'll type in the uh, group command again. This time when we do group, uh, I'm going to give it a name. And we'll just call the name of this group, uh, I'm just going to call it Tuesday for right now, for lack of a better term. If this was a particular parcel or something uh, specific to that particular area, I would give it that. But we'll just call it Tuesday for right now. Uh, I can also give it a description, and I'll just call it uh, my first named group. And then I'll select my objects, that being my building and the annotation. We'll click on Enter. We're ready to go. If I select this now, I see that it's a group. If I pick in the center here, you'll notice that as I move this, it continually reads back to the center line. So my annotation continues to update um, with respect to uh, the, you know its position to the uh, station and offsetter back to the center line. So it continues to function like a, a civil object, but I only need to um, select one object to grab all of the relevant geometry at one time. All right. Now, first thing, um, you said, hey, if I put this as a group, it still functions like a civil object. We see that it does, but these objects can also contain grips that I can do other things with. And now you're showing me that when I select this group, there's a single grip. Is there any way to get access back to the groups of the, or the grips from the civil objects? And there is. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in group display mode. So we'll start to type that in. We'll use the autocomplete. Uh, the uh, values for that are 0, 1, and 2. 2 is usually the default, which gives you the bounding box and the single grip in the center. I'm going to set it to 0. If I set it to 0, it should give me grips for all of the objects. And you'll notice that when I select it, I now have access to all of the uh, grips from within those objects. So if I'd like to make an adjustment to the uh, annotated label itself, I can do that if I'd like to add another grip in here to... You know, change that, maybe even come in and use the grip to change the shape of my, my building pad or, you know, whatever other manipulation I'd like to do with it from the grips. I can come over here with my trees and I can even start to adjust using those grips, maybe the configuration of those. Once done, I'm going to hit the up arrow, go back to the group display mode, set it back to two, and then we see that these continue to be groups. All right, such that I can, you know, um, continue to work with it as I did before. All right, 
So one more thing I'd like to show you. We gave this one a name. This one we didn't give a name. It was unnamed by default. But what do these names, these descriptions do for us? I can see maybe some examples where I create a number of these within the course of my model. And I'd like to get an idea where these things are, how many I've created, what actually is encompassed within these groups. To do that, I'm going to type in the command the classic group. So we'll type in classic uh, group. We'll use the autocomplete to finish that. And we see that uh, we've got a group here that's listed uh, called Tuesday. That's the one that we, uh, we named. So we'll go ahead and uh, select that one. We see that uh, the name is Tuesday. It's my first group. I have the ability that I can highlight those objects on the screen. So it shows me what, uh, what part of my model is, is made up of that uh, you know, geometry that's part of that group. I can uh, say that I'd like to include unnamed groups. So the A3 is the, uh, the one that would have been created that represented my trees. So if we highlight that, we see that on the screen. So if we don't give it a name, it's some unnamed group. Uh, we'll start with A1 and it'll start to go up from there. Uh, my first one's A3 because I've been experimenting with this a little bit before I got started. So we won't necessarily worry about the unnamed. We have the ability we can make them uh, selectable or unselectable so that uh, maybe I want to have it visible on the screen, but I don't want people to be able to make changes or uh, select that geometry. I also have um, some pretty cool commands down here at the bottom that I could add more information to it. So perhaps I'd like to add to this group maybe this uh, point object. So I'll right click and now if we were to uh, highlight that we'd see the point object as part of that as well. All right, so very, uh, very intuitive, very straightforward. Uh, if it's uh, no longer, you know, required that it be part of a group, we can either explode it here. Uh, we could uh, just use the explode command, or the other command that I would show you is a command that's called ungroup. So we can say ungroup. Uh, we can select it, or we could type in the name. I'll just, since we have a name, we'll call it Tuesday. Right click and or hit hit the enter key. Um, let's see, maybe case sensitive. Tuesday. Oh, I need to say N for name. We'll say uh, Tuesday. That group is now uh, ungrouped, so we see now that those are back to being uh, being individual objects again. All right. So once again, using the group command, we can kind of capture things that are you know relative to each other or should remain together such that if we uh, move or perform some other operation on them, that they, or even just a selection, that we make sure we get all of the things that should be tied together. Uh, we can assign those names and descriptions to help uh, organize that information. And uh, as always, if, uh, if the need becomes that we don't need them as groups anymore, we can either explode it or just uh, ungroup it, and they will go back to individual entities. So hope this uh, can help you with your organization and selections on your models, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. See ya.